Hello, my name is Will Campbell from Atos Electrohydraulics. In this session, we're going to talk about a question we get asked a lot. What is the difference between conventional servos and servo solenoid valves? At the basic level, they are both designed to do the same thing. The servo valve concept has been in service for over 70 years now and is a very mature and proven technology. That said, there are several shortcomings with this technology and servo solenoids were developed to overcome these shortcomings. This technology has only been around for a little over 20 years or so, yet it continues to evolve in ways of added functionality and ever-increasing performance. With this in mind, we tend to classify the older generation of servos as classic. Today's modern servo solenoid valves are equipped with state-of-the-art, rugged onboard electronics and a list of functionality and capabilities that continues to evolve. We will take a look at some of the key technologies at work and highlight the main distinguishing features. The classic servo is a device that at its base is a pilot operated valve. There are several varieties of servo pilot techniques such as flapper nozzle and jet pipe. Servo solenoid valves on the other hand are direct driven with a proportional solenoid and tend to be slightly larger devices for a given flow rate. The flapper nozzle valve, for example, uses a torque motor to regulate a pair of control orifices that in turn act to adjust pressure on a main stage spool. The basic operating principle involves using this so-called torque motor, which is mounted to the main stage. When we apply a command signal to this device, it's going to want to try to rotate this mechanical flapper. If we have command pressure available at both sides of these control orifices, we apply a command signal to the torque motor. We rotate this over and it tends to try to close one of the orifices. Pressure in one chamber is going to increase. With an increased pressure in this chamber, the main stage spool is going to want to move to the right. Being mechanically coupled to this so-called flapper, once we get to a point where the torque applied to this, which is moving it towards an orifice, once we have an equal force mechanically trying to pull this flapper in the opposite direction of the torque applied, we eventually get to a state of balance. Once we are in that state of balance, the valve remains open at the given commanded flow rate. For example, theoretically, if we applied a 50% command signal, we should move this to one position. This pressure will increase. The main stage spool will start to move. And theoretically, the force net balance at some point should be around 50% flow for this rated valve, give or take probably up to four or 5% uh, based on hysteresis, which is another parameter we'll talk about shortly. This design inherently has high pilot flow leakage. And given that it is controlled by small orifices, it happens to be particularly sensitive to contamination. Older machines using classic servos required standalone analog drivers. These devices were typically mounted in a control panel on or near to the machine. Setup was manual, requiring the tweaking of pots to set minimum and maximum flows, ramps, and more advanced closed loop applications, PID loops needed to be calibrated. This involved a lot of trial and error, and ideally in a silico. Highly skilled technicians were required. If a machine happened to have a lot of functions that were the same and used the same valves, this process was needed for individual valves. In the case of an original equipment manufacturer who would be setting up the valves in a repetitive fashion, this can become tedious and time consuming. Diagnostics were limited. There were usually a few test points you could find on the front of these control boards at the time. You would use a multimeter to be able to verify command voltages and such. This forced the person testing the drivers to actually be in front of the panel, often away and out of sight from the ac hydraulic axes they were actually testing, making the process cumbersome at best. Serviceability of these boards was also challenging as they were mounted in a Eurocard style mounting rack. This was fixed to the back plate of the control panel and used tiny terminals connecting the control wiring to the board. While viewed as a compact installation at the time, those of us who do service calls found these racks to be rather problematic to work with. Lastly, of course, there was no networking available for these types of boards because everything was analog. 
The modern digital servo solenoid valve offers a wide range of advantages compared to classic servos. Onboard digital electronics provide a factory calibrated and optimized valve right out of the box. There is no need to individually match an external driver every time a new valve is installed or replaced. Leakage is significantly lower with servo solenoid valves. With classic servos, there is always a pilot flow running through the control stage, even without a command signal applied. In systems with many valves, this can translate into a significant efficiency compromise. Failsafe modes are a major advantage of servo solenoids. Having a predictable, deterministic condition following a fault is critical for operational safety. With classic servos, failures are often related to contamination affecting one of the control orifices. When this happens, the valves tend to go hard over, usually resulting in an actuator traveling all the way out in one direction or the other. With digital servo solenoid valves, we are continuously monitoring the operating parameters of the valve. When a fault is detected, the valve shifts to a fourth position, which allows us to bring the machine to a controlled safe stop. Servo solenoid valves do consume more power than classic servos. This is because the spool is positioned by being coupled directly to a proportional solenoid. Having a higher electromechanical force directly applied to the spool does present some advantages, however, such as being less impacted by friction and contamination. When comparing high performance valves, there are a series of key performance parameters we always look at. This provides a means of doing a true apples to apples type comparison. The measure of these parameters is governed by international standards and as such creates an equal playing field for comparison. One of the first key features with servo valves is the spool flow characteristic. With servos, we refer to these spools usually as zero lap. A common notion when discussing closed loop position control is that a valve simply opens, an actuator moves to a desired position, and then the valve closes. This is not the case. Expanding on the idea of a zero lap spool, we must now consider the concept of pressure gain. This is a measure of the rate of transition of pressure drop across a spool end. A high pressure gain means a more responsive system. Valves are delivered from the factory adjusted to almost exactly zero. There will be an equal pressure drop from P to A as P to B. This means that without a command signal, we will be applying a similar pressure to both ports simultaneously. With a single rod cylinder, this means that with both ports pressurized to the same level, the cylinder will begin to move out, move out slightly, as the area differential presents a higher working area on the cap side. On old school servo valves, there is a mechanical null adjustment that allows us to bias this pressure differential to correspond to the cylinder area ratio. With zero command reference and system pressure up, we gradually tweak this setting until the cylinder motion stops. Going back to our closed loop position example, our servo spool will be in constant action continuously modulating ever so slightly to maintain a differential pressure across A and B such that the net forces acting on the cylinder are equal, and we hold a static position. Step response is the measure of how fast we can react to a command signal. When selecting servo valves, fast is good. Typical values for single stage servo solenoid valves would be in the 10 millisecond range, comparable to classic servos. Hysteresis is the maximum difference in the valve regulation for a given input signal depending on whether the signal is rising or falling. This phenomenon is mainly dependent on mechanical friction and magnetic effect. With classic servos, we are not actively closing the position loop for the spool, and as such, typical values found can be anywhere from 3 to 6% depending on the manufacturer. With digital servo solenoid valves, we are operating a precise position control loop of the spool. So consequently, this class of valve is more accurate with typical values less than a tenth of a percentage. Frequency response is one of the main parameters to consider when selecting a servo valve. This has been the main criteria that classic servos were designed to excel at from the very beginning. And even today, is still where they lead the field. Classic servos can be very fast. 
The measure of frequency response looks at two parameters, phase lag and amplitude loss. Phase lag is measured in degrees out of phase and amplitude is measured in decibels. The benchmarks are 90 degree phase lag and 3 dB down on reduced amplitude. So what does this mean? If we look at the chart, you can see we have a red line that represents the typical command signal. We'd be going from zero, 100%, zero, negative 100%, and zero. When we start this test, if you can imagine us oscillating a spool back and forth very, very slowly, let's say with a one second frequency, at that point, this line, which represents the feedback or the actual spool position, would be right on top of the command signal. We would have no, no issues whatsoever following that command. Now, imagine we gradually start increasing this frequency. We're going up to 1 hertz, 10 hertz, 15 hertz. The faster we go with a complete cycle, 0, 100%, 0, negative 100%, and back, the faster we go, the more and more difficult it's going to be for us to mechanically keep moving that spool back and forth inside the valve, up into such a point that theoretically we could get this frequency command so high in the hundreds of hertz where mechanically the spool may just be vibrating because we can't respond any longer. So typically, what does that mean? Well, in most systems today, classic servos can operate up to 200 hertz and sometimes more, while servo solenoid valves will typically max out around the 60 hertz range. Realistically, however, the vast majority of industrial applications are well below this range. Unless you are building a destructive shaker table or designing landing gear for commercial airplanes, the need to go beyond 60 hertz is rather rare. ATOS offers our entire family of electrohydraulic valves and pumps with all digital controls. Analog controls are simply a thing of the past. Everything is configurable with our ESW software, which is a free download from our website for the entry level controls. We work toward bringing you the most user friendly experience in working with modern electrohydraulics. Industry 4.0 is not just a buzzword and when people talk about the future, it is here now and we are giving you the tools to fully embrace it. Be sure to check our channel for other video sessions where you will find a complete overview on how to get this tool and to set it up. In summary, modern electrohydraulic systems should be designed using high performance digital tech. Classic servos still have their place in certain applications where operating at frequencies over 60 hertz are still required. However, the large majority of industrial applications will be well below this threshold. Digital servo solenoid valves are applied successfully today in a huge range of markets and applications. Our top markets tend to be power gen, oil and gas, die casting, plastic injection and blow molding, forestry and processing, paper, and wind power to name a few. Digital servo solenoids offer the most robust valve solution available. All are tested to 50G shock and vibration ratings and are environmentally protected to IP66 and 67. Modern controls are rapidly moving towards being fully networked and ATOS offers all commonly applied protocols used in industry today, such as Ethernet, PowerLink, Profinet, Ethernet IP, etc. So when you're designing your next machine or considering upgrading an older machine, give ATOS a call. At the end of the day, we have better tech, much better availability, best support you will find in the industry. When you call ATOS, we actually answer the phone. You can talk to an application specialist or engineer any point in time. We have the best software tools available and we have excellent pricing. So when you consider all of these factors, clearly advantage ATOS.